Okay, let's take a look at how difficult this C clip is to remove from the output drive shaft for the transmission. Now you're going to need an expandable one like this. So when you're pressing in like this, the nose will expand. So what we're trying to do here is lift the C clip like that out of the spline. I'm going to use a screwdriver and try to walk it out of there. So this is just in the event that you do not have professional tools. You could still get away with using what you have. I'm not damaging the part. Now this is not the recommended way for doing so, but that's what you will most likely have to do. And eventually, if the C-clip has been removed too many times and installed, you will have to get a new one because it's not that likely for the spline to be damaged by the C-clip. Now that we have that gear removed, we have a roller bearing. This is a thrust bearing. And that brace against the pull gear, and the transmission casing. Now we could pass the shaft out by pushing it forward, rotating the transmission, using your glove. Just want to reach in here. Try to walk it forward. Now when you have a forward, you're going to be able to push back on this planetary so this C-clip can be removed from the output shaft for it to come out in the rear direction. Okay, our next goal is to locate this C-clip that you see on the shaft. You see there's an opening of it right here. So what needs to be done is the shaft has to be pushed forward and it will do so by moving approximately four to five millimeters, allowing removal of this clamp. Now, like I said, you're gonna need an expandable C-clamp tool for doing this, but I like to do it the way that I know best, and that's with the two screwdriver. Now, what needs to be understand here is one screwdriver is for holding the C-clip while another one in the right hand is for lifting the C-clip out of its groove, bringing it forward on the spline. So this is where you're going to have a lot of complication in disassembling the unit is going to have to take this tail section apart. Now it will also help 
Here we have a small screwdriver. What will be preferable here is a pick with a hook. Okay, now what can be understand here is that you don't want to hold the clip in the groove. You want to hold the bottom of it like that. So when you're popping the top out, it was a spring right off the shaft. Now we can push the shaft back and that will be the way for removing tail shaft. Okay, here's another difficult one. That's this retainer ring right here that holds the low reverse brake clutch liner assembly. Most of the time you're going to try to go in there with a screwdriver and it's going to get difficult. I like to use these needle nose. Just place it in there. Just catching the edge of the ring. See it pops right out. I hope you get that. All these clutches out of there. So now when you remove these clutches, you gotta look for a C-clip in there. Because it has to be replaced. That's what it looks like. So has to be installed like this. This front and that's the rear and that curve is against the casting on the wall. But you want this 90 that takes that bend with a hole to be against a steel liner. So you're going to take a look at how to install this in the next video for assembly. This is the part where we want to remove the low and reverse brake assembly piston and that will be where this spring retainer ring was seating on because the spring is what pushes the piston back when the hydraulic pressure is released. Now the best way for removing this piston is if you are going to remove the valve body on the back there will be a passageway where you could blow compressed air and it will help pop this piston out. If you're not going to remove the valve body, you will have to use a needle nose pliers and try to get in there and pull on the sides, walking the piston forward. And this is it removed. So this is the only piston inside the transmission and when you look at the seal it has a lip so that lip is folding out and on the inside has what's called a D-ring. It's a rubber seal and on the outside is an oil seal. And it has a lip to it and that lip folds out. Now we'll take careful inspection in there as always. The fluid will need cleaning and all the stuff will be clean in a wash sink, a machine shop wash sink. You will also pass your fingers on the inside surface of where that seal is applying itself and on the outside make sure that it's absolutely smooth. 
Once the oil seal and the D-ring has been replaced on this low and reverse brake piston, it will most likely not look the same as the one that was removed. So to help it look the same, you will want to use a masking tape for taping the end of the seal in, holding it to conform to a position similar to the one that was removed so it could fit perfectly into its cylinder when the tape is removed. Also do not forget to apply transmission fluid or Vaseline to the seal and its mating surface. So this has complete the removal and when installing you're going to make sure that you install your D-ring, your inner seal and the outer seal. Like I said you want it has a lip to it. So let's see if I could take a part of it out. You see how it looks? And then it folds on the outside, so it's an L seal and it folds out. So you just want to try to place it in there. When doing so, you're going to have a sharp edge. So you're going to have to be careful. You have to feel along this edge, making sure there's not any sharp for cutting your L seal. So you could hold it. have to be very careful when installing this piston because you want to maintain that lip folding in for the oil ring seal. That's it. Just made its way into the cylinder where it needs to see. In the next part, we're going to take a look at assembling the transmission, internal drive line assembly that is most likely to require service and replacement of the clutch and steel liner.